Welcome to the presentation of the seventh annual Justice Prize, honoring courageous individuals who have furthered the cause of justice throughout the world. We're delighted to be here at Georgetown University Law Center for this presentation, a place that has educated so many distinguished attorneys and jurists. I'm pleased to introduce our host here at Georgetown, Alexander Alenikoff, Dean of Georgetown Law Center and Executive Vice President of Georgetown University. Dean Alenikoff has been a member of the Georgetown faculty since 1997, and he has served as its dean since July of 2004. He has written widely on immigration, refugee and citizenship law and policy, constitution law, statutory interpretation, and race discrimination. Ladies and gentlemen, Dean Alenikoff. Thank you very much, Patricia. And it, it is my great, great pleasure to welcome you and the Gruber Foundation staff to Georgetown Law today and to all the uh, folks who have come to this wonderful uh, ceremony and panel discussion. And I'm particularly delighted to welcome our three Justice Prize awardees, uh, Justice Arhibai, Judge Serda, and Ms. Feria, who we'll be, we'll be hearing from in just a, a minute. We are so pleased to see you here today. And of course, we are honored by the presence of Justice Ginsburg. As always, we are delighted to see you here at Georgetown. Georgetown Law prides itself on its strong commitment to human rights. And it is our great pleasure to host today's uh, award ceremony and the symposium. Now, the topic of the symposium, Courts at Risk, Rights in Peril, is timely. Unfortunately, in our world, this topic always seems timely. And few are better positioned to discuss this issue and propose a way forward than the incredible jurists and human rights advocates who are with us today. Through your innovative advocacy, your courage, and your determination, you've shown yourselves to be true champions of justice and have shown your willingness to fight when courts are at risk and rights are at peril. And so on behalf of Georgetown Law and our Human Rights Institute, I'd like to extend my deepest congratulations to the three Gruber Justice Prize Award winners to commend them for their inspirational work on behalf of the cause of human rights. And I look forward to what will be a fascinating discussion. Welcome. Thank you, Dean Alenikoff. We are in the presence of many distinguished guests here today, and we will be hearing from many of them later in today's program. However, there is one we would not be hearing from and that we are delighted to welcome, and that is Argentine Ambassador Jose Bordon. Ambassador. <laughs> the Foundation's prize program was established in 2000, and we now pre present five annual $500,000 prizes in the fields of cosmology, genetics, neuroscience, justice, and women's rights. Each prize recognizes achievements and discoveries that produce fundamental shifts in human knowledge and culture. Last month, the Cosmology Prize was presented to Saul Perlmutter and Brian Schmidt and their two teams, the Supernova Cosmology Project and the High z Supernova Search Team. They both independently discovered that the expansion of the universe is accelerating. Next week, Pinar Ilkarakan and the organizations that she co-founded will receive the Women's Rights Prize for helping reform Turkish laws to advance gender equality and human rights in Muslim societies. Later this month, Maynard Olson will receive the Genetics Prize for his founding role in establishing the field of genomics. Early in November, Shigetada Nakanishi will receive the Neuroscience Prize for his pioneering research into the communication between nerve cells. I'd like to acknowledge the founding vision of my husband, Peter Gruber, in establishing these prizes. His spirit of generosity is a guiding force for all of us at this foundation. 
Unfortunately, he's not feeling well and could not be here with us today. But he sends his warmest congratulations to all of our recipients here today and to all of you for coming to attend today's ceremony. We award the Justice Prize on an annual basis to honor those who advance the cause of justice as delivered through the legal system. Past recipients of this Justice Prize are most recently Aharon Barak, retired president of the Supreme Court of Israel, Dato Param Kumaraswamy, a Malaysian attorney, Chief Justice Arthur Chaskelson, and Deputy Chief Justice Pius Langa from South Africa's Constitutional Court, Fali Sam Nariman, President of the Bar Association of India, and together, Justice Anthony Roy Gubby, former Chief Justice of Zimbabwe and the Law Society of Zimbabwe, who received our first Justice Prize. And now to the presentation of the 2007 prize. As you may know, we are privileged to have a distinguished international board of advisors who serve as a selection committee for each year's laureates. This year, its members are Rosalie Silberman Abella, Dennis Archer, Giuseppe Bisconti, Arthur Chaskelson, Martin Lee, and Sandra Day O'Connor. My husband Peter and I deeply appreciate the knowledge, the commitment, and the enthusiasm that these advisors bring to selecting each justice recipient. We'd like to announce the 2007 recipients of the Justice Prize, Justice Carmen Argibay from Argentina, Judge Carlos Cerda from Chile, and Attorney Monica Feria from Peru. Before I ask the recipients to step three of our recipients not only had exceptional careers of their own, but through their numerous and exceptional achievements, they made a difference in bringing justice to the people, both nationally and internationally. That is what we celebrate today, and that is what the Gruber Foundation Justice Prize stands for excellence. The title of the symposium which we will follow cannot be more appropriate here. Where are all the courageous ones? Well, they are there, the <laughs> courageous ones. And I cannot, I cannot hear but underline another uh, courageous one 
Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg, to whom we are very grateful to have accepted while in full session of the court, to which she invited some of us this morning to attend to, uh, to uh, preside the symposium a little bit later on. On her late, latest dissent in particular on discrimination against women in the workplace, in a, is a lesson of courage in itself, the courage to stand for justice for all. Thank you, Ruth, for this. Most of you probably know by now much about our prize recipients. Let me, however, outline the main features of their journey to law and justice. Not only did Justice Carmen Argibay go to jail for her stand on freedom, justice, and democracy, but all along her most distinguished career as a lawyer and on the bench, she cared about her fellow citizens particularly the underprivileged ones. For example, she initiated, and for 33 years, every Saturday, she participated in the education of women workers in her country. A human rights activist all along, she was a member of the People's Tribunal on Comfort Women, exposing to the world the cruel treatment of those abused women during World War II. The Yugoslavia War Crime Tribunal, to which she was nominated by her country, provided an oppo another opportunity to denounce crimes against humanity. Her nomination as the first woman to the Supreme Court of Argentina does underline the high esteem in which she is held by her peers and the hope for justice for all she brings to her country. And here I must stop from a very last um, minute message that was uh, received from the Office of Justice Argibay. And the message says, we find that it is an excellent expression of what the Justice Prize stands for and clearly applies to all three of those on earth today. And here it reads, and that's what we got. Dear, Ms. The, dear Dr. Argibay, those of us who have had the distinction of working with you wanted in some way to accompany you on this very special day, the day in which you will be awarded for your valor. Uh, much courage is needed to transform life's painful experiences into something positive for oneself, and even more is needed to do so for others. This is what you have done invariably and what you have taught us by example to do to fight for your convictions in favor of justice, but essentially to act with those same convictions. We know that distances cannot lessen the enormous affection that we send you in this letter, your colleagues. Interestingly, Judge, Judge Carlos Chiedas' career as a legal scholar and judge has also brought him to investigate gross human rights abuses during the Pinochet regime. He took a very courageous stand in bringing indictments against members of the Chilean military and their collaborators, for which he paid a very heavy price also. Courage is the mark of great judges, and Judge Serda's rectitude, courage, honesty, and independence in the pursuit of justice has suscited the admiration not only of his country, but around the world for, and I quote, one of the most brilliant jurists of Chile today. Judge Carlos Serda's life is seen both in academics and in the judiciary, as a testimony to a deep commitment to the values of law. And in this day and age, it is comforting to know that judges like Judge Shredder are guardians 
of the human condition when threatened by power, as he himself said. As a practicing international lawyer, Monica Ferriatinta has worked on issues pertaining to state responsibility for genocide and a commander's responsibility for massacres. A brilliant scholar, in 2000, she was awarded, among others, the diploma of the Hague Academy of International Law, becoming the first Peruvian lawyer ever to have been awarded such a great distinction. Monica Feria Tinta was herself imprisoned, tortured, and survived a massacre by orders of Alberto Fujimori, which prom prom prompted her to apply for and was given refugee status in the UK. <coughs> As an international lawyer, she has championed the fight against torture around the world and argued the first international case concerning the rights of children in times of war, as well as bringing reparation to victims of crimes against humanity, involving thousands of people and crimes of violence against women. For her courage, she paid a heavy price, but nu the numerous awards she has received are a tribute to her exceptional dedication to justice and human rights. So these are three remarkable persons the Peter and Patricia Gruber Foundation does celebrate today. I would now know, now would like to ask my fellow advisor Giuseppe Visconti to read the official citation honoring our three laureates. Mr. Bisconti is past president of the International Bar Association and is currently chair of the International Foundation for the Rule of Law and the Independence of Lawyer and Judges. Giuseppe? No, I can go this way. President Patricia Gruber, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, it has been a privilege for me to participate as a member of the Board of Advisors in the process of selection of the candidates for in the award of the 2007 Justice Prize of the Peter and Patricia Gruber Foundation. This process of selection is very different from other processes for the award of a prize that I have participated in or that I may know of, which are essentially based on evaluation of the competence, achievements, distinctions, professional, artistic, or otherwise, of the candidates. The process of selection of this prize gives you the opportunity and requires that you read and delve into the life of the candidates, that you understand and feel as if they were your own, the hardships, sacrifices, injustices they have suffered, and the efforts and actions they have undertaken, sometimes at the cost of physical injury or deprivation, or even at the risk of life, well beyond the call of duty, and often truly heroic, in order to defend, assert, and attain justice for themselves and more significantly for others. These champions of justice have made us understand the deep, profound wounds of injustice and the pregnant significance of justice for all human beings. I am grateful to and would like to thank the Peter and Patricia Gruber Foundation, also on behalf of my fellow advisors who could not be here today for the privilege they have bestowed on us by allowing us to participate in this process. The 2007 Justice Prize of the Peter and Patricia Gruber Foundation is hereby proudly presented to Carmen Maria Archibay, Carlos Jose Cerda Fernandez, and Monica Feria Tinta, who overcame personal experiences of profound injustice to become outspoken champions of justice. Through their enormous personal courage and tenacious commitment to a just rule of law, they challenged the absence of rights in their respective world, and in so doing, brought justice to their own countries and inspiration to human rights advocates around the globe. It's a great honor and a moment of great felicidad. I'm very honored to ask her Justice Carmen Maria Archibay, Judge Carlos Jose Cerda Fernandez, and Attorney Monica Feria Tinta, 
please come here to receive the prize. and Monica Ferrier Tinta. and Carlos Cerda. Warm congratulations to all three honorees.